From Lions Clubs International, this is LQ, Lions Quarterly. Now, Knights of the Blind, the third in a series of centennial videos. The roaring 20s in the U.S. Everything was moving. Automobiles, pictures, and hemlines. The stock market was booming. But for people who were blind, it was a time of struggle. Many viewed people who were blind as incapable of being educated, supporting themselves, or living independently. So they were kept home closed off from the world. There were some residential schools and a few public school programs in the U.S. for blind children. Lions recognized the need to help and began their journey to become Knights of the Blind. Lions' mission to serve the blind began shortly after their founding in 1917. They created jobs making brooms and checked students' eyesight in school. In 1922, Lions in Cincinnati, Ohio, asked local schools what children who were blind needed most. Imagine you had gone through your youth with nothing but school books to read. For more than 40 years, Lions partnered with Clovernook Home for the Blind to produce the International Lions Juvenile Braille Monthly. It was filled with stories, games, and puzzles. Lyons reported that it was the first Braille magazine for children. All of us appreciate the magazine you send each month. It would be nice if we could talk to the Lions Club and tell them how much we like the magazine. Lions encouraged clubs around the U.S. and Canada to provide it for free. Visually impaired students from Clovernook typed, printed, and bound the pages. We are sure that no club has ever done anything more worthwhile. In 1925, 7,500 lions gathered at Cedar Point in Sandusky, Ohio for their annual convention. Helen Keller, accompanied by her teacher, Ann Sullivan, spoke to lions. I appeal to you, lions. You who have your sight, your hearing. You who are strong and brave and kind. Will you not constitute yourselves knights of the blind in my crusade against darkness? This became a rallying cry and energized Lions to do more on behalf of people who are blind and visually impaired. Delegates unanimously voted to make Helen and Anne honorary Lions, the first women to receive this honor. Houston Lion J.W. James, who owned a furniture business, was inspired to start employing women who were blind to make lampshades. Later, his club helped others earn a living sewing a variety of items. Don't make the mistake by holding your blind workers down to menial tasks. Their fingers are capable of the most delicate work, which ought to command a higher price than what the blind usually do. In California, Berkeley Lions formed the first scout troop for blind boys. With their peers, they explored the outdoors and learned citizenship. Lion George A. Hearn served as Scoutmaster for many years. My greatest thrill is watching these boys develop skills, broaden their interests, gain self-confidence, and thoroughly enjoy themselves. In Illinois, Peoria Lions Club President George Bonham noticed his friend, a blind newspaper stand operator, struggled across the street as he held his black cane. Bonham thought that white canes with a red tip would be easier for drivers to see. His Lions Club convinced the city council to pass the first white cane law in 1930, giving blind pedestrians the right of way. By 1956, every U.S. state had white cane laws. There is scarcely a community where the white cane of the blind is not as common as blindness itself. Lions worked internationally for similar laws.
The Boston and Manchester Lions Clubs partnered with Perkins Institute for the Blind to start Camp Allen in 1931. Named for Lion Edward Allen, the director at Perkins, it was the first camp to provide outdoor recreation for girls who were blind. It led to Lions establishing similar camps throughout the world. Through the years, Helen Keller continued to visit Lions Clubs, praising them for their attitude toward the blind, which she called new to the world. Lions are trying to help the blind as they would help one of their number who had met with a misfortune and not as people different from everyone else. In Michigan, the Detroit Uptown Lions launched a guide dog program in 1939 to help one of their own. When Glenn Wheeler couldn't get into a program, his fellow Lions created one with just $400 and a hat full of ideas. Known as Leader Dogs for the Blind, this program has helped thousands gain newfound freedom and independence. With verbal commands and hand gestures, she directs Sherry to their destination. That's still true today. Pauline Ulrich has had leader dogs for 52 years. It's given me the opportunity to basically go anywhere I want to go. Internationally, Lions have started and supported many other guide dog schools. In 1945, Lions opened the nation's second eye bank in Buffalo, New York. A donor eye was used with a clear cornea. It was like putting a clear window where a frosted window was before. I'll never forget the very first day the doctor took the bandage off. It was the most beautiful sight there was. Lions opened eye banks in many nations to help millions see again through corneal transplants. You can't put a price on sight especially to a little fella as small as he is that never has seen anything. Across the U.S., Lions provided pocket braille writers, known as the blind man's fountain pen. Lions have also collected, recycled, and distributed millions of eyeglasses to people around the world through the Lions Eyeglass Recycling Program and Eyeglass Recycling Centers. Lions' work as Knights of the Blind and friendship with Helen Keller continued to grow. Lions awarded her the International Gold Medal in 1951. Two years later, Helen spoke of her travels at the Lions International Convention in Chicago. I had known that the Lions of the United States had chosen, as their basic activity, work for the blind. But I had not realized they had leaped over the wall of different languages to unite in their services to the captives of the dark. One of her final public appearances was in 1961, when she was honored with a Lions Humanitarian Award. Throughout the 1960s and 70s, Lions' work as Knights of the Blind grew. I'm Roy Rogers, and I've been checking my notes here in preparation to tell you a story. It's about a wonderful place in America where a group is working to rehabilitate blind men and women and boys and girls to learn to live with their blindness. In India, we have many, many blind people, especially amongst the poor. The real tragedy is that so much of that blindness can be prevented in 1990, Lions Clubs International Foundation launched the Sight First program, taking Lions service to new levels. Major cataract campaigns help millions regain their sight. Sight First also helps eliminate sight-robbing diseases, such as river blindness and trachoma. The most gratifying part of it is what we do in partnership with Lions International. I have a feeling, standing here before you, of gratitude for what Lions do throughout the world. Sight First continues to establish comprehensive eye care systems. It's also increasing low vision services and educational opportunities for those who are blind. Why? Though much has been accomplished, Lions remain steadfast in their commitment to serve as Knights of the Blind. They will not rest until everyone has a chance to live life to the fullest. Someday, you will look over the fields of your endeavors. If I am still alive, I shall say, well done, good and faithful knights of the blind. And you will say with equal joy, we have received as richly as we have given.
That center area is going to be all for the dancing. Every year, this Leo club organizes the prom at their high school. We set up the tables and chairs. I help decorate the walls. I love doing this. We're just decorating and helping. I'm really looking forward to the dance. We love dancing. It's something that we focus on all year long. We, you know, invite the seniors to come. Senior citizens, that is, for the Harvest Moonlight Senior Prom. <laughs> the Senior Citizen Dance is a great example of the Lions, the Leos, and the Senior Citizens kind of all coming together. Leos start by serving dinner with help from their teachers and Lions. It makes me happy that I know I'm doing something for someone else's day. I don't know, I'm sensing trouble over here. There is a sense of camaraderie across the generations. It's fun to like hear all their stories about their life and what they did. Oh, back in my day. Fred and Stella Gallico are one couple taking a trip down memory lane. They met on the dance floor more than 70 years ago. I thought I was too old for her. I was 19 and she was 17. And we started dancing and she was such a great dancer. We've been dancing ever since. The seniors are only too happy to teach the Leos how they trip the light fantastic. They show you the dances they used to do when they were younger. It's a lot of fun. From this shared experience, they find common ground. What they realize is that we were once teenagers too. I loved to dance when I was 15 and I still do. We just look older on the outside. The majority of us are still that same 15 year old kid. The dance also fosters a greater appreciation for young people. Over six of them came to our table and asked us if we needed anything. Could they bring us a drink? They brought us flowers. They've just been charming. This is a prime example that we have great kids and that if you just give them the right activities to do, that they're gonna build to be those leaders and hopefully those future lions as well to continue doing that community service in the future. I really hope that someday I could become a lion because this has taught me some valuable life lessons, you know, like giving back to the community. Members of the Deist Lions Club in Belgium have made it their mission to serve people with intellectual disabilities for more than 50 years. In 1963, our club started with uh, one uh, school with 14 children. When my father became a member of the Lions Club, uh, I was only 12 years old, but I remember very well my sister was one of the first students in this school. It was the first school of its kind in the area. When this school was founded here, there, it was really needed and the school was always growing because there's still so much demand. When the school outgrew its building, Lyons built a bigger one. Now 180 children can learn and socialize in a school close to their homes. And when they grow up, they have a place to work. Lyons have been sponsoring a work center since 1967. They employ 300 people in a state-of-the-art workplace. Here, those with intellectual challenges are given a chance to develop their abilities, gain independence, earn a living, and more. They do a lot of very interesting things. I think it's important for everybody to have the feeling to be needed in the community. In 1981, the Deist Lions established the Martin Van Camp home for adults whose parents have died or whose family can no longer care for them. It offers a wide range of services for the nearly 140 residents. Our Lions Club is uh, very proud that uh, in our city uh, we did everything which was possible uh, to help uh, mentally disabled people, uh, to give them schools, to give them a home, to give them a workplace. From the beginning, the Deist Lions counted on the professional skills of their members, whether doctor, Lawyer, architect, or entrepreneur, each is involved in caring for the changing needs of people with intellectual disabilities. In 2014, they enlisted five neighboring Lions Clubs to develop Groenhof, a service center to help those with traumatic brain injuries. The formula for our success is to have one clear goal. That's the most important thing. Uh, we started to work for uh, mentally disabled uh, people 
and we stick to that after 50 years. Sometimes the light of the world can't shine through. Wherever you turn, the beauty of the world seems lost. Sometimes, no matter how hard we look, we can't find hope. until someone shows us. And the world is illuminated with the colors of peace. Get involved in the Lions International Peace Poster Contest. For more information, visit lionsclubs.org. Send your story suggestions to lq at lionsclubs.org. Be sure to like and share LQ on social media. LQ is available on our website, YouTube, iTunes, and DVD. Thanks for watching LQ, Lions Quarterly.